Welcome back at Still the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Set for our first major conversation, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, which is Nigeria's Electoral Empire, on Friday, January 6th, if you recollect, uh, commenced the distribution of permanent voter cards at the various ward levels in all the 36 states of the Federation and the federal capital territory, Abuja, uh, directing registered voters across the country who are yet to get their cards to do so uh, at their various wards. However, the exercise has had its challenges with some alleging uh, a delay or delay tactics uh, being employed by the electoral umpire. For instance, an interfaith group on Tuesday raised the alarm over what it alleges to be the deliberate denial of access to the electorate to collect their permanent voter cards based on ethnic or partisan considerations. And also, leading opposition party, Labour Party, raised the alarm, alleging some irregularities by officials of uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, while distributing the permanent voter cards, the PVCs. Uh, joining us to discuss this and other issues surrounding Nigeria's uh, forthcoming elections, we have uh, Nika Gule, who is a public affairs analyst. He joins us via Zoom from Makori, the capital of Benin State. Nick, it's good to have you back on The Breakfast. Thank you very much, and good morning to our viewers. Um, do you agree with these uh, uh, groups? I mean, we've talked about the Labour Party, we've heard from an interfaith group, and some, you know, Nigerians, itinerant uh, voters who have gone to pick their cards, alleging that there are underhand tactics uh, by the electoral umpire, INEC, in the distribution of the permanent voter cards. Do you feel that, that is the case from what your observation and experience is? I think nothing should be ruled out. Absolutely nothing. Because as the electoral law has plugged loopholes that hitherto were being exploited by the politicians to rig elections, the politicians are going to be looking for avenues to continue with their rigging and uh, frustration of people from getting their voters card could be one of those uh, uh, mechanisms that they want to use. So I, I am not ruling out anything because I know that elections are high stake games by politicians. They want to seize power by all means, regardless of uh, what they want to, what they do. So I would call on INEC to have their eyes firmly focused on this. And if there are people, even within INEC, who are actually frustrating uh, voters from getting their PVCs, INEC has to deal with that. You know, and, and Nigerians must be vigilant because now they know that they cannot rig elections again at the polling unit. Why? Because the electoral law says whatever results that are declared at the polling unit are going to be transmitted electronically to the INEC central server. So the shenanigans that used to happen at the polling, at the so-called coalition centers, has now been totally visited. Politicians have lost it there. So they are going to be looking for ways to prevent people from going to the ballot, and this could just be one of those. No. So is this, is this in your opinion, uh, these complaints of irregularities in the distribution of the permanent voter card. In your opinion, is this um, a deliberate attempt by, by INEC um, as alleged as a whole? Or do you think that maybe one or two individuals within the commission may be acting in the interests of certain politicians? I don't think it's a deliberate attempt by INEC as an institution. Because if I look at INEC, as currently constituted, I have some measure of hope and confidence in what they're doing. Because the electoral law that was signed in 2022, INEC was very instrumental to that. If they didn't want us to have better elections this year, they wouldn't have backed that electoral law. And if I look at the INEC chairman's public outings and the public education that they carry out and all of that, I would think that as an institution, I make is for free and fair elections. But if within INEC you have some elements 
who are working for the interest of politicians, that cannot be ruled out. Because politics, like I said, is high stake game. These politicians take it as a business where they invest money, and then when they get into office, they make their returns. And they will be prepared to pay people, even within INEC and outside of INEC, to stop voters from getting their PVCs. Because they know that if voters get their PVCs and they go to the ballot, that they cannot change the results. So they're just going further upstream in the electoral process so that they, they, they stop people from going to the ballot. Because now they know the votes are going to count. So I will, I will, I will definitely not say this is an, 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 an INEC as an institution trying to uh, stop people from getting their, their voters' cards. But INEC has a duty as an institution that if they notice these breaches where people are being stopped from getting their voters' cards, they need to step in and step in and make it easy for people. I mean, we have lost the game already in the sense that uh, for the 2027 elections, uh, INEC needs to do something better. This uh, collection of uh, PVCs, they need to make it easier. For instance, I take myself as an example. In the last elections, I voted in Delta State. But in, uh, in 2023, this, this next month, I am going to vote here in Benue State. So I went online and I switched my polling unit from Wari to my local government in Bandeka. Now, INEC actually did all that, but my PVC was in Bandeka. I had to travel all the way from Abuja on a very terrible road from Makodi to Bandeka to go and pick up my PVC. And then I'm going to travel back again next month to go and vote. Two things I need can do is to say, one, vote, a PVC collection should be there till the day before the elections. That way, people who are resident in a different place and are voting in a different place can travel once. They just travel a day or two to the elections they collect their voters' card and then they cast their ballot and then they return back. But if people have to travel long distances like I did just to collect the PVC and then are expected to travel back again to go and vote, a lot of people might not want to do that. I did it because I am very resolute that I want to vote because I know that it's only through voting the right leaders into office that Nigeria is going to solve. So I never can think about something like that. But for future elections, I need to actually make it possible that if I am in Abuja, but I said I want to vote in Benue, I can go on the INEC portal and order for my PVC to be delivered to me in Abuja so that I can just go there, show that I am the rightful owner of the PVC and collect my PVC. I need to do make it that you must travel to the world where you are voting to go and collect your PVC. So these are some of the, the learnings that INA can take on board for future elections. But for this immediate election, they can actually extend the deadline for collection of PVC to the day before the ballot so that people can travel once, collect their PVCs and vote. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't this be a, a recipe for chaos, uh, looking at the fact that, I mean, INEC needs to get its act together for the election proper um, ahead of that election, if we're going to have people collect the the PVCs at the various you know places where they are mandated to collect those those PVCs um, up to a day before the election, maybe I may not be able to adequately prepare for the election and and focus on it, you know, because of our last minute attitude. Of course, many people are going to wait till that that last minute to go for it, you know, and then if INEC has to wait up till 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 late in the night. Maybe they may not be ready for the election next year. And wouldn't you say that, um, I mean, they started this collection of um, the permanent voter cards on the, 5th, on the 12th of December, 2022. And it's going to end on the um, 22nd of January, 2022. They moved from the um, local government areas to the wards uh, on the 6th of January. They'll be there till 15th January, where from whence they'll go back to 
the local government areas. Um, so isn't this enough time for people to collect their cards? I mean, you went back to, to Benue State to get yours. Can't every other person also go back to where they're going to vote and get it? Well, it is very difficult for everybody to do what I did for various reasons. Number one, it will cost you money to travel such a long distance. Number two, if you don't have the time, you might be at work, you are not able to, to, to take time off from work, which is, again, something I may can do, that uh, the PVC collection center should be open seven days a week. Seven days a week, they should, if possible, even open 24 hours or at least 18 hours a day. Uh, I make us to do everything possible to make people collect their PVCs. I make should be the facilitator of people collecting their PVCs and not a blocker. And let me say something to what the, the very valid remark that you have made, that uh, if I make uh, opens the PVC collection centers to a day to the election, whether it's not a recipe for chaos, well, it's probably not going to, it's not going to be. Why? Because um, on the day of the ballot, the number of PVCs collected is not one of the criteria for determining the outcome of an election. What is required on the day of election to determine the election is the number of accredited voters. So if people are allowed to collect their PVCs up to a day before the ballot, they will only just show up at their various polling units and INEC will still be able to accredit them there is nothing that says a PVC that was collected a day before the ballot will not be read by beavers. It will be read by beavers. So once I make now accredit the voters, that is what begins to count. The number of accredited voters, then the number of votes cast, and then the number of valid votes, the number of, of disqualified votes, and then we now know who has got uh, uh, and the number of votes, which candidate has got X number of votes. That is what is qual uh, the qualification. The, the, the deadline for collection of PVC is not a criteria for determining uh, an election. And I make sure open up those centers to a day before the election so that people can travel, pick up their PVCs, and then vote the next day. All right. Interesting. Um, um, some people have said, you know, it's not necessary to go uh, uh, votes in, in your village, you know, vote where you reside, vote where you live, vote where you pay your taxes, you know. Uh, what do you say to that? And if, if that is the case, if that is done, then it may be easier for people to, to retrieve their cards. So if you live and work in a Tiosa, for instance, or you live in a Tiosa, uh, you pay your taxes in a Tiosa, uh, in Lagos, and if you registered in maybe in Calabar, um, you it's better to ask the, the commission, it's okay, I'm not going to go to Calabar to go vote. I want to vote in the Tiosa. Bring my card here. Then it's easy for you to collect. Maybe we're facing these issues because people have refused to heed to the advice of INEC to vote where they reside. I think that's a very valid point. Uh, 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 yes, there are several reasons why people are no longer residing where they register. For some persons, after they had registered where they pay taxes, where they reside, and all of that, over the time, I mean, I next stopped uh, voter uh, registration some months ago. Within that time, uh, circumstances of life would have taken them away from where they registered. That's so that's one case. Then for the other case, some people are passionate about the development of their state. And uh, that is the basket that I belong to, where we now go back and register in our states because if I register in Abuja now, I won't be able to vote for the governor of Benue State. So I have to come to Benue to register. For some people, that is the reason. And uh, for all of this, I agree with the point you have raised that if that is not your reason, that is you didn't vote, I mean, you didn't register and now you have uh, moved away from where you registered or you are not passionate about voting for a particular state, then register where you are. You know, these are the kind of things that will build us as a nation. Where wherever you are as a Nigerian, you should take it to be your state of origin. And it is it, one of the things that the next National Assembly has to deal with. This whole issue of state of origin. We are Nigerians. Dividing us into 36 states and the FCT is just geographic demarcation. 
It doesn't remove our Nigerian citizenship. If people are residing in the place, they should be taken as indigenous of that place because we are Nigerians. If we get to that point where people feel a sense of belonging to where they are residing, where they are working or doing business, where they are paying taxes, I think what you have said will begin to happen, where people will now begin to register to vote in those places without now having to go back to their states. And it's something that we have to do very urgently in the next National Assembly that will put laws in place that remove this whole concept of state of origin. It should be state of residence as a Nigerian. It should, there should no longer be anything as state of origin. Wherever you are residing in Nigeria, that should be your state of residence. And we should begin to see people stand for office in those states where they were not born because where my father was born doesn't necessarily have to be my own state. I can say my father was born in Benue, but I am now an Edo resident. That is where I can contest for election, I can vote in election, and I can do all of my things. It's nation building, and it's a critical thing for the next National Assembly to do. All right. Um, yesterday, we had enough time to talk about election security, especially uh, uh, with uh, the statement by the head of training at INEC uh, saying elections could be postponed or cancelled because of insecurity in, in parts of the country. The commission uh, or the, the federal government came out to counter that. Um, and of course, we're hoping to have someone from the commission this morning to address that. So we'll, we'll leave that. But I think w what, what is major is the fact that uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission has released uh, uh, the final list of uh, registered voters in the country. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the statistics, but more generally speaking, what are your thoughts on that? Because we hear uh, we have 93 plus million registered voters as we speak. Nigerians. Yeah. Yes. Uh, before I answer the question, let me let me touch briefly on the election security that you have mentioned. I think the government should not be coming out to defend, and you know the government should not be coming out to counter these allegations. I expect the government to investigate these things. The fact that the electoral law has now strengthened the hands of INEC, has now empowered the voters, has now cleaned up the space such that rigging elections will become very difficult. We know that politicians are going to go on to other games. And one of those games is to bring a sense of insecurity in the hearts of the people so that on the day of the ballot, they sit at home for fear of their lives. It is something the politicians will do. So if these kind of allegations come forward, instead of the government entering the defensive mode, the government should actually take this feedback, work on it, deploy intelligence, and actually check if anything like that is happening. And if it is happening, they need to nip it in the board. So that's my advice to government. Let's not be defensive about it. Anything is possible when it comes to elections. So we should not take anything for granted. Now, go, going to your, your question in terms of the number of voters that are on the register. Yes, I next said it's 93, 93.4. So over 90 million yeah, 90 Nigerians 90 are on the ballot. Yeah. I mean, on, on the register. What I don't know is if that includes Nigerians who have already passed on. You know, we don't have a system in Nigeria of registering births and deaths. Because if we have that such a system, INEC will be able to use the death register to clean up the electoral uh, register such that it is only Nigerians who are living that are being counted. But that's, that aside, 93 million or over 90 million Nigerians uh, on the register. The last presidential election, the total number of votes cast for all the candidates was just about 30 million. So what we are appealing to Nigerians in this electoral circle is that 30 million people cannot decide for the 90 million. Let the 90 million come out. Let the 90 million also have their say. Let the 90 million be part of the leadership recruitment because we are all going to suffer it. Whether on the election day you sat at home or you came out, if the road is bad, you will suffer it. If there is no water, you will suffer it. If there is no electricity, you will suffer it. If there is no health care, you will suffer it. If there is no education, you will suffer it. If you are a student and you are sitting at home, be prepared that when the 30 million elect a bad leader for you, you will be at home for another year on ASU strike. So this is the time for us to make our voices heard. 
So we know good people who are in Nigeria. There are Nigerians who can do this. We know them. Let's vote for them so that they can take the reins of power and move this beautiful country to where it should be. This is a country that we shouldn't be suffering. I mean, on my way coming here to this office that I'm speaking to you now, I saw a lengthy queue on the NNPC mega station. Nigeria slept there overnight so that they will buy fuel at the normal price. That is terrible. My heart bleeds when I see that. Why? Because Nigeria is one of the largest producers of crude oil globally. This is a commodity that Nigeria should have in plentiful and we should be exporting to others. Because we're not coming out to vote for the right people to do this for us. We keep having charlatans there who cannot convert crude oil into petrol and other petroleum products, and we are all suffering for it. So this country belongs to all of us, and we must all come out. 90 million people must come out. Let me say one thing. In the last American elections, Donald Trump stood with um, uh, Joe Biden. Donald Trump had his own supporters. There's nothing you can tell them that... Even if you say Donald Trump uh, has killed somebody, that will even make them support Donald Trump the more. What people who did not want Donald Trump to repeat a term in office did was, they went and mobilized people to come to the ballot. So Donald Trump pulled 74 million votes. 74 million votes on his own is the highest any presidential candidate has ever pulled in American history. But those who didn't want Donald Trump in office mobilized 81 million other people to come and vote Donald Trump out. That is what we need in Nigeria. There are some people that support this politician. There's nothing you will do about it. No matter what you say, they will still support this politician. They let Nigerians, good people, come out in numbers and vote and overwhelm the numbers of those who are supporting these politicians so that we can have the right people in office. 93 million. Let's see 60, 70, 80 million come out. That's what we need. All right. Month. All right. Nick, Nick uh, uh, really, uh, really interesting looking at the figures, uh, the numbers. Um, I mean, there's a lot of um, talk about, oh, you know, people have come out to register, you know, to get voters' cards. There's a wave, a new wave, a third force rising. Um, we saw a lot of young people coming out, standing in lines to get, their, to get registered to vote. Um, oh, you know, there's going to be a third force. But if you look at the register, from the last exercise, the last uh, CVR, uh, the Continuous Voter register, Registration that was just suspended because of the elections, uh, 9.5 million voters were added to the register, bringing it to a total of um, uh, uh, 93.5 million preliminary um, a figure of 93.5 million and of course you had some objections and they took it down to 93.4 million so if you look at the fact that we have just about 9.5 million new voters in addition to what was there before probably about 83 or 84 84 million registered voters it means that those who are the new voters pale into insignificance when compared to <laughs> those who were there before so the question is looking at that will anything change let's say all the people who are coming now want to vote for Peter Obi, for instance, of the Labour Party, all right? Nothing may change, or will anything change, because we have those who already have their candidates part of the 84 million that were there before. Something will change. Something will dramatically change. And I actually think that, because of the new electoral law, so I have a lot of faith in this electoral law, uh, the 2022 electoral law, particularly for things like electronic transmission of results. And things like, if the beavers doesn't work, then that election will not count. You must go back and use beavers. For me, I think that we are going to begin to see green shoots of real democracy in Nigeria. Why? The 80 something million that voted in the last, I mean, that uh, were registered, were on the register in the last electoral cycle, like you have already said, only 30 million of them came forward. So about 50 something million of them never stepped out to go and vote. If a chunk of that 50 something million that did not step forward in 2019, step forward next month, they can change the dynamics of an election. Yeah? And the, the nine additional million 
Nobody says that all of them are going to vote for a particular candidate anyway. So all we need is, we need a chunk of the 50 million that never stepped forward in 2019, plus a good number of the 9 million that were added, and they can change the electoral outcomes in this country. And they can change it as the presidential, the, the national assembly, the governorship, and the state assemblies. They can change it. Now, the other thing there is that I don't think 9 million uh, four years, uh, only nine million were added. I mean, the, I, I don't think the, 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 that number that number is uh, the number is accurate in terms of the people who step forward to register. But that number should have been more. So we are still having cases of who have turned 18 years old, or who have returned to the country, or who were more than 18 years but never registered, are still not registering. And they have lost it this time because the, the, the voter register is closed. But please, they need to step forward for the next electoral cycle to come and register. I believe that the electoral register in Nigeria should contain at least 150 million people. So right. we still don't have enough of that register. All right. a, lo a lot has been made of uh, the, the involvement of youth in, in the forthcoming elections. Um, and like I said, the number of registered youth in this uh, current New, recently released voter register, 93.4 million. Number of youth there, uh, 36.06 uh, million, or precisely 30, sorry, 37.06 million, or precisely 37 million uh, and 60,399. Uh, if you want to look at that, it's not even up to, is it up to half of the 90, 93.4? No, it's not even up to half of 93.4. So are we making too much of a, the, um, the power of the youth vote? ahead of the 23 elections, are we overestimating the power of the youth in determining the outcome of the election? I don't think we're overestimating it. Uh, first and foremost, I, I don't know what definition that I need you to determine who is a youth, you know, but I don't think we're overestimating at all because at the last presidential election, like I said earlier, only 30 million votes were cast for all the candidates. And if we have 36 million uh, youths in Nigeria, it then means they can actually determine the outcome of an election. Because I think the, the, the difference between the eventual winner, the eventual winner of that election last, last uh, in 2019, the, the, the difference between the eventual winner and the runner, runner up was just a few million votes. I don't have the numbers in my head, but mm -hmm. I know that the difference was just we'll a few look million at that votes. Too. Yeah. And those few million votes, could have been changed, or the game could have been changed by the youth. If five million votes, the youth, had cast their ballot for one of the candidates, they would have made a difference. So one thing I advise youth in Nigeria is that, you see, uh, those countries that we want to jack back to, those countries that we have our eyes to jack back to, in those countries, it is the youth who are determining the health of their democracy. It's the youth who are building those nations. Is the youth who are stepping forward to be to be counted? Is the youth who are part of the leadership recruitment? Is the youth who, after election, continue to accompany the leaders with their protests, with their voices, with their letter writing, with their phone calls, and all of that? Nigerian youth, instead of taking the backdoor approach of jumping to somebody else's country, let us come together, youth. And this is where I expect the likes of NAS. NAS. As a student union, they suffered grievously in the past years. Students have stayed at home for more days than they have been in the classrooms. And you will expect a union like NAS to be politically aware, to be out mobilizing their members to come forward and vote with their consciences and vote for the right candidates. But you are not even seeing NAS active in any of the political uh, theaters. You are not seeing NAS. You are not seeing any youth movements. You are not seeing youth organize themselves. I would like youth in Nigeria to organize themselves in the same way they organize themselves when it comes to voting for the Big Brother show. You will see youth open voting centers. They will be putting their money to buy the airtime, buy the data to vote for candidates in the Big Brother. But Nick, Nick, that Big Nick, Brother Nick. show, after you have watched it, you go home to no light. You go home to no job. You go home to lack of security. You go home to lack of infrastructure. You go home to lack of healthcare, lack of education. So 
Organize yourselves. It's not late. It's not late. We still have a few weeks before the ballot. Let the youth of Nigeria step forward. The 36 million youth of Nigeria, even if it is just half of them that decide to vote for a particular candidate, nothing will stop that candidate from being elected. Oh. All right, Nick, very quickly, because uh, of time, um, let's look at the, the geographical spread of the votes. And I want your thoughts on whether it will affect the outcome or how it will affect the outcome of the presidential election in particular. Um, the Northeast has 12.5 million votes, voters, registered voters rather. The Northwest has 22.2 uh, million registered voters. They are the leading uh, geopolitical zone, you want to call it that, uh, in the country. The North Central, 15.3 million. Uh, Southeast, 10.9 million. South, South, 14.5. 4 million in Southwest, 17.9 million. So in the order of most of uh, the regions with the uh, most number of votes, your voters, registered voters rather, you have the Northwest leading, number one, Southwest second, number two. Um, you have uh, North Central third, number three, and then South South and so on uh, before you go to Northeast and then uh, Southeast. Looking at that, it means that the northern part of the country uh, the northeast, northwest, north central, and northeast are uh, ahead. We're ahead of the southeast, south south, and southwest. Uh, how do you think this will affect the outcome of the presidential election? Very quickly, please. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, it is sad that the people in the south of Nigeria are not stepping forward to be on the register because I believe that the southern states are so populous that if people actually step forward, these numbers would have been different. But in terms of electoral outcomes, I think one thing that I'm very happy about that is developing in Nigeria is that people are no longer looking at ethnicity now. They are no longer looking at where candidates come from. People are beginning to look at the candidates directly on their own merit. So if that be the case, I expect the dynamics of the 2023 elections that will begin next month to be different. But that is not to say that there is not a chunk of people who will still vote because the person is of the same religion with me or speaks the same language with me or comes from my state. They will still vote that way. But let people of good way vote with their consciences so that whatever the numbers of the, of the votes of those who are voting based on religion or ethnicity will be, let the numbers of those who are voting with their consciences, voting with, for the right candidates, be more than them. That is a democracy. Once your votes are more, like I said in the Donald Trump case, you are going to carry today. So I, I, I am confident that 2023 elections are going to show us very surprising results. Uh, we, we don't have to, all the time. We actually have overshot one. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Nika Guli, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will just discuss PVCs. Please make the sacrifice. Make the sacrifice like I did. Go to where you registered and take your PVC. If you go and there is a queue, even if you register where you reside, stay on that queue. It is better you stay on that queue, collect your register, I mean, collect your PVC, than to suffer for another four years. All right, Nick, appreciate your time. I hope that uh, viewers uh, will heed your advice and uh, all the best. <laughs> all the best. Thank you. Well, for now, you're one of the 93.4 million Nigerians on that list. So, congratulations. Hey, congratulations, you, Nick. All right, uh, that's the much you can take on this uh, part of the conversation. We'll look at the housing deficit in Lagos State and uh, what those in the short-led business are doing to try and address the issue. Stay with us.